Welcome back everyone. This is video 7 of the Gull Guides featured highlight series, July 2025. As many of you have likely heard by now, a kelp gull has been discovered nesting in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The bird is consistently being seen on an industrial rooftop where it's hybridizing with an American herring gull. Literally hundreds of birders have descended on Lake Michigan to see this southern hemisphere gull. Many questions have been asked regarding its origins, and you can read more about the details of this extraordinary event under the June Monthly Notables notes on anything Laris. I'll link to that page in the description below. So in this video, with the increased interest in kelp gall identification in the last month or so, I put together some slides here that um, I hope will be useful to anybody who's been thinking more about kelp gall ID. This is quite an extraordinary event to be talking about um, kelp gall identification in June, July in the Northern Hemisphere is unheard of. Um, what we have here is this adult male on the right with its chick and a nest off to the right and its presumed herring gull mate. Um, to put this in perspective, this is Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the west central shores of Lake Michigan. And here's where kelp gulls are ordinarily found, all throughout the southern rim of the southern hemisphere. This is a southern hemisphere gull. They are rarely found north of the equator. The nominate subspecies is Dominicanus, found throughout South America. Um, there is uh, six subspecies for us to ponder. Um, I've seen recently in some of the eBird checklists from Wisconsin, people claiming that the Wisconsin bird is nominate Dominicanus. And although it might be, I don't think there's any way to really verify it. What we do know for sure is that it's a male because it's been seen mounting and copulating with a female herring gull several times. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if we can confidently label this bird Dominicanus. And um, I'll explain why in the next couple minutes here. So as far as identification, um, there's no question this is one of the darkest gulls in the world it's almost impossible to misidentify throughout its range. Now, once they come north, that's where it gets a little more tricky. One thing I want to point out here, besides it being so dark, is that the lay color almost always averages duller than the bill color. Um, for anybody who might think um, this could be confusing if, if I were, say, thinking of a lesser blackback, lesser blackback gulls, um, typically don't show this much white drooping below the greater coverts. So because kelp gulls have these broad white trailing edges, kind of like slatyback gull, you'll notice this drooping skirt uh, on adult types. But also the eye color. Um, many kelp gulls show darkish eyes. Not all, but many do. And so that should start to eliminate lesser blackback gull at this age. One thing I notice at least consistently with the Peruvian population is that they average longer legs than most gulls that I'm used to seeing. Uh, and this is noticeable from a distance. And so these legs are quite long um, all, all throughout the flock. I don't know if it's, it's unique to the Peruvian birds, but I've noticed it in birds um, in photos that I've seen in Peru and Chile and also in Brazil. Um, and this is in contrast to this smaller subspecies, Austrinus, that's found in Antarctica. Uh, this subspecies is known for having short legs and is known for having a shorter, more stout bill. Um, I'll show you in just a second here that on the wingtip, um, Austrinus tends to have um, more white in the wingtip. Um, and that can get tricky, especially with the broad white trailing edge. Uh, but I do want to show this bird perched here before I go on to some flight shots. Uh, this bird was keenly picked out and identified by Alex Lamoureux a few years ago at the Brownsville Landfill in South Texas. Um, Alex identified this bird um, and uh, made a lot of people happy down there. You'll notice the jet black upper parts the duller greenish yellow legs and the white drooping below the greater coverts here on those secondary tips. Um, dark eye should also help exclude lesser blackback gull. When you get these birds um, 
to open our wings, you'll notice that at least in the nominate subspecies, Dominicanus, they tend to have a small P10 mirror. This one is fairly small, um, but it's not completely unheard of for birds in like Chile and Peru to not have any mirror at all, to just have an all black wingtip. All right, and so that's not true really of the populations that you find in Madagascar and New Zealand. A lot of those birds actually have a P10 and a P9 mirror. What's interesting here about this kelp gull is that in many ways, this white on the leading edge of the hand and the broad white um, trailing edge here, in many ways, this resembles slaty back gull. Of course, there are no uh, white tongue tips here or pearls that you would find in a slaty back gull. But watch this here. When you look at this Austranus um, individual from Antarctica, there's the broad white trailing edge, one of the broadest white trailing edges I've ever seen on a gull. Um, interestingly, it's not jet black on the underside of the hand here. And most amazingly are these white tongue tips that you see on P6, P7, and even a little sliver here on the edge of the tongue tip of P8. And so this bird would really present some problems if it was seen in the northern hemisphere. Um, of course, you'd need lay color, you'd need orbital color, uh, a bunch of things to, to clarify this individual. Uh, but fortunately for us, the Wisconsin bird has a fairly dark black wingtip, much more in line with this. Um, a, a slightly larger, more rectangular P10 mirror, uh, but overall there are no issues with the Wisconsin bird. Um, there are hints of a tongue tip on P6, uh, and this could mean a number of things. Uh, I know that I've seen photos of birds from the Patagonia region that aren't quite, um, you know, these standard Dominicanus types, but they're also not as boldly marked as these Austranus types. So. Uh, whether there is some intermediate geographic variation there in the southern rim of South America, or if this bird has come from entirely uh, a different direction, we, we don't know. What I will say is that if you have some extra time on your hands in the next few weeks, you probably want to get to Lake Michigan and see this bird. Uh, just an extraordinary event to see a nesting kelp gull. Uh, it is obviously the first record for Wisconsin. It is now the northernmost nesting record of a kelp gull worldwide. At least in North America, um, kelp gulls have not nested anywhere that we know of other than the Chandelier Islands. The Chandelier Islands, um, if you don't know, um, right off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, in the late 80s, early 1990s, ornithologists found um, kelp gulls and heron gulls breeding there and then they found them hybridizing and this went on for some years and continues uh, until now and so uh, if you're interested in this there's a link on my website uh, with an article that details that that event of hybridization between kelp gulls and heron gulls on the Chandelier Islands so I'm going to end here I think um, anybody who was wondering about kelp gull ID, probably has a better sense now that you're looking for these duller legs, perhaps a darker eye, um, you know, broad white trailing edge on the open wing. And um, the wingtip we're gonna say for now is variable depending on the subspecies. Uh, if we're talking about Dominicanus, nominate from South America, they generally don't have uh, prominent white tongue tips or large mirrors. Uh, they generally don't show a mirror on P9, um, but then you start getting into places like Madagascar and Australia and New Zealand and the wingtip patterns on those birds are, are quite different. Okay, thank you guys for watching. If you have any requests or suggestions, please, as always, just send me an uh, email to thegullguide at gmail.com. Till next time.